I'm Laura. And I'm Keisha. And this is the Pattern Queen Stitch With Us number six. And today, wow. I know. And today is January the 24th, and it's a Sunday, a nice, I guess, kind of overcast. I haven't looked outside today. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gray and murky. Yeah. Ah, it's January, though. Yeah. We're but not expecting- for much longer. We're expecting some snow tomorrow, but, you know, we'll see if it really turns to snow by the time it gets here. Right. And this is a channel about cross-stitch. It is. And friendship and silliness and rambles and some shenanigans, which I am sure Keisha has cooked up for me in the form of whatever questions she's come up with. Well, if you had been paying attention, then you'd already know what the questions were, Laura, because we got some great questions from Michelle Bendy on our last uh, floss tube video. So, awesome. And they are some ones that we're probably going to talk about for a while. So if you guys have any questions for us to answer next time, make sure you comment those questions and we'd be happy to ramble about whatever you want us to ramble about. <laughs> doesn't take much with us. <laughs> it really doesn't. We've already been rambling for quite a while now. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so I am working on this r2d2 from spot colors and i just love this little guy and here is where i am on it so cute so lots and lots of gray lots and lots of gray in my future but that's okay <laughs> i'm starting on r2 because he's the best there you go <laughs> i working on sunflower bookmark from the work basket it's a um it was an extra piece that was put in um to our retreat in 2005 at the heartland cross stitchers society wait heartland cross stitchers i can't remember maybe society and um this one is done on perforated paper and I'm trying to cheat it in because it's my pattern on the other side. Uh, so that's how far I am. There, you can see the colors better. Yes. So. Nice. Well, and I guess I should have said this is on 14 count Ada, and it's just with the stuff that came in the kit, including the hoop. The hoop was part of the kit. Really? Oh, because that's how you finish it, right? Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And the needle that came in the kit. This was just ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> All the things. Right. So the first question that Michelle posed to us was what our favorite pizza topping was because we were talking about pizza in the last video. Oh my gosh. I'm so weird about that because since I'm gluten-free, I don't have pizza a whole lot however right. having said that we have been a little hooked on mod pizza yes lately. i was gonna ask you if you had the um the crust at mod because they do a gluten-free and a cauliflower crust yes and i do the gluten-free um and it is really good and then katie reads toppings and i say yes or no but right. basically i've been doing um a garlic rub and red sauce and then grilled chicken um, onions and i like tomatoes so much that you can either get them sliced or chopped and we check both of them so that i get extra tomatoes and um then katie what's our cheese mix um, asiago mozzarella and parmesan asiago mozzarella and parmesan and um, then sometimes I'll have them put the extra um, dollops on top of the red sauce, mm -hmm. but you know, it just kind of depends, but that's what I have really been liking. Mm -hmm. See, if I go to mod, I always get the Sri Rancha swirl on the top, which is like the Sriracha and ranch put in there. Oh. Cause I like spicy stuff. They have the a balsamic fig glaze that is amazing but it just doesn't go with what i'm 
the other stuff I'm using. So. Right, right. Yeah, we like mod pizza quite a bit too. Um, we'll do that. We like that because you can get your own individual pizza and Timothy likes different things on his pizza than I do. We have some things that we agree about, but mostly he wants like all the meat and I want a little bit of meat and a lot of veggies. So <laughs> it, it uh, kind of balances out. I, like I said, I really like veggies. Like I, I love mushrooms on a pizza. That's one of my favorite things. And like green peppers. And I mean, really just like, give me the works on the veggies. Um, <laughs> and a lot of times I like um, a white sauce on a pizza but you can't go wrong with just a regular like red sauce and pepperoni. Like sometimes that's what I want. And sometimes with some jalapenos on there because I'm a little bit spicy. <laughs> I um, tend to skip the white sauce because um, I, I love it. I absolutely love it, but they're never quite sure whether it's gluten-free or not. Right, because flour to thicken. Yeah, it just depends on the thickening agent and- right. I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, I get that. And then like, I like good toppings, but I'm definitely like a crust person. Like I'm, I will never leave the crust off the end of the pizza. I will always eat it. Uh -huh. So I like a pizza with a really good crust and it doesn't really matter. Like I like a thin crust cause I like crispy but I mostly like a thick crust, so. I just like pizza and pizza is one of Timothy's favorite foods. So we eat pizza quite a bit. I even like, um, every once in a while we'll do the, get some English muffins and some pizza sauce mm -hmm. and some cheese and pepperonis and just have that for dinner. So pizza is pretty big here. <laughs> All right. The next one, that was just a warm up. The next one is really a thinker. And I'm not even sure that I know that my answer to this. So I'm glad you have to answer first. Oh. Um, <laughs> what is the best gift you've ever been given? Oh my gosh. I know, hard one, right? Yeah, we're gonna have to just uh, vamp you can, for a little bit. You can, have, you can have several. You can uh, kind of go through and be like the most sentimental one, the most like, whoa, I really wanted that. <laughs> it's really hard. Uh, or you can say my children are my greatest gifts. I was just going to say that, you know, I can go all mushy <laughs> on you and say that was, that was the best gift. But um, man. I know I it's think, hard. It is because like, I'm so grateful for different things for different reasons. Like, um, I know that my family loves me and they buy me wonderful, fabulous things. Mm -hmm. But like out of the blue, after um, the show me retreat, I got the most beautiful strawberry. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's a sampler strawberry. It's so pretty. And it was made by one of my stitching friends and she did all the finishing and the whole thing is done in purples. Oh, wow. So, you know, that was, that wasn't an exchange. That wasn't anything other than her just being lovely right? and sending that to say, Hey, thank you for doing the retreat. And I will say that um, the retreats that we have hosted in person have just, I, I've gotten some lovely things from them. And those just mean so much because you feel like you're killing yourself in the time leading up to it, just trying to make sure everything is there and everything is perfect and everyone will have a good time. And for someone to recognize that is, is really awesome. Well, and I think as stitchers ourselves, that anytime we get a gift that is stitched, we understand mm -hmm. what it took to get that gift to us. Because I mean, I, well, I mean, stitching stuff isn't inexpensive to buy, but just the time, you know, even mm -hmm. in something small, someone spent that much time stitching it and thinking about you. And I mean, cause 
I mean, just to kind of piggyback off of you, some of the best gifts I've ever gotten were the stitched gifts I got at my baby shower for James and everything that someone stitched for James is hanging up in his room. I have a shelf where all of the stitched pieces live, except for the towel that my sister-in-law stitched that lives with his bath time things. But everything that someone stitched um, is all up on that shelf. And it's, it's right over his crib. And so I can look at, well, everything's on that shelf except for the wonderful, uh, the wonderful picture that Connie of Count Twice Stitch Once uh, stitched for us, which hangs right over the chair where I rock James to sleep. Oh. So that I can look at it because that is really impressive. I mean, they're all impressive, but that one's over one and it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought about another one. So, you know, when you have your kids, yes, you get fabulous things. So you spark something for me. See, we feed up each other. Yeah. Um, when Katie was born, we had a friend, um, a family friend, and it was, okay, so it was our friend Paul's mother. And Mary asked if she could make a christening, a christening gown. We didn't even know whether it was a boy or a girl but she wanted to make a christening gown for the baby. And we're like, okay, okay. And so she used, she did smocking on this beautiful gown and she used iridescent threads so that it could be either a boy or a girl. Mm -hmm. And it is gorgeous. It is just gorgeous. Mm -hmm. And we actually, she gave it to us at a, at a um, shower and then after Katie was born and you know we got to see it we hadn't used it yet she said um could I have that back I'd like to put it in the Missouri State Fair oh wow and I'll get it back to you uh -huh. and we're like you know you did all this work absolutely yes we're gonna give this to you so she took it, she entered it in the Missouri State Fair, and it won. Oh, wow. Like top honors because mm -hmm. it is fabulous. It is so gorgeous, <laughs> you know? And so then Katie got to wear it at her christening after that, and it was really sweet. So yeah, perfect yeah. timing because the State Fair is in August. <laughs> yes. Katie born in July yeah July 8th and so we had time to see it and everything and yeah then we got it back for that after the state fair so wow all right well and then kind of going off we're just going to talk about baby things now I mean oh. I've got some other good gifts but um really like you and Katie completely outdid yourselves just like with the baby shower, which is a non-tangible non gift, but that was the gift of your time and planning and coordination. And, and you guys wrapped all the presents, so they could have all been for you, from you. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm really thankful for every everything I received there. But um, one thing that I thought was really special is when we all got together pre-pandemic pre times, the last one, I think, our last get together with everybody. And we told everyone that I was pregnant and you gave me those stork scissors, Aww. which um, you had told me before that those were sentimental in your family. Uh -huh. And then you gave them to me. And I just thought that that was really sweet, you know, to mark me having a baby that you gave me something that's, you know, so symbolic in your family of, mm -hmm. you know, having babies and stuff so it just when you're stitching I feel like it just brings a happy memory every time you use them yeah and they they're the ones that I use most often like I have several pairs of scissors but those are the ones that are in my st stitching stuff in my stitching spot I use them all the time mm -hmm. awesome um I will say because I've said this over and over and over another stitching thing and you're gonna laugh at this one is that Katie last year for Mother's Day um, bought me the Emma Congdon book mm -hmm. with all of those beautiful patterns in it. She's already said that she will never win Mother's Day again because she's 
she did it. I said, well, you know, you told me there's another book coming out this year. So I think <laughs> it'll probably work. You can tie yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm sure that once we are finished here, I'm going to think of a hundred things that are just fabulous. Oh, I'm thinking like maybe the most, I guess, monetarily great present I was ever given is my grandparents bought me my first car. Oh, um, and it wasn't expensive. It was, uh, let's see, it was a 2001 Pontiac Sunfire. So the time I got it, I mean, it was six or seven years old. It had like 90,000 miles on it. Um, and, but I loved that car. I, I drove that car until I couldn't drive it anymore. And the reason why I couldn't drive it anymore is because I got hit in the side um, and it would have cost too much to try to repair it. And at that point I had over 200,000 miles in it. Like I drove this car a ton. Um, Cause I used to travel for work. And when I was in college, I would drive back a lot of weekends. So. I, I lived in that car. That was the joke with my friends is that I lived in my car. I had a house, but I lived in my car. Um, and so I got in that accident in November and luckily it was on the passenger side and I was fine. Um, the car was still drivable. I just, you couldn't open up the passenger side door. And so I drove it until the tags were up and then I got a new car. <laughs> so... I loved that thing. I loved that thing. Um, I will say that like Katie is always very creative with what she gets me. Um, <clears throat> last year for my birthday, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I had a Harry Potter birthday Ooh, fun. and they bought me all sorts of shirts and Katie bought me robes and um, she even bought a, a set that had socks and a headband and a tie in it oh, uh, all in Ravenclaw and you know those things are fun but um you know I'm sitting here and I'm just like what am I supposed to think of I can't I can never think of anything until I'm done she has bought me um I've, I've a couple times been given by my sister-in-law and by Katie books that I love in mm -hmm. beautiful editions and that's something you know that's like a treasure that i will pass on so well and i'll say um this christmas and i'm not sure who's more thankful for it me or katie but my in-laws got me a keurig <laughs> which is a good present but katie's like yes <laughs> she is every day I text her right after I got it too. And I was like, Katie, we have coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, um, my husband's a really good gift giver. He usually buys me something interesting like this year for Christmas. So I used to, I was like, I'm going to really get into wines. I'm really going to understand wine. I'm going to like have my favorite wine and be able to tell you about wine. But now I have a James and James is little and I can't drink as much wine as I drank before I had yeah. James. Um, so we were just talking and I was just like, maybe I'll get really into cheese and I'll like <laughs> learn about different kinds of cheese. So uh, for Christmas, he bought me a cheese tasting journal that has like ways to rate and talk about like the difference the differences in the kinds of cheese that you taste mm -hmm. and then he he has gotten me a cheese of the month subscription box <laughs> i so, think that's fun yeah so i'm gonna learn all about cheese <laughs> oh my goodness yeah I, I i'll sit here and think about that and that will take a while to come up with other things like i got my my big pretty suitcase uh mm -hmm. to take to retreats that was a fabulous fabulous thing and i love it it's a big vera bradley suitcase so i don't know it's hard yeah it's okay you can think on it and if something else pops up 
then you can just say it later on. So this is why I didn't come up with any additional questions because I was like, <laughs> oh, these are good questions. We're gonna talk about them forever. Um, the next question that um, Michelle had is, what would our dream vacation be? Oh, lifetime on a cruise ship. <laughs> Katie said lifetime on a cruise ship. And that'd be good. That's pretty much true. We love to cruise. Yes. And um, I'm not terribly particular about where the ship is taking me. Mm -hmm. I loved our cruise to Alaska. I would like to take a longer one with the um, the railroad package with it so that I could go inland. Um, but yet yeah, cruising is probably the most favorite thing that we've done. Although we are, we are big time road trippers. Yeah. And we enjoy a good stop. I mean, for the family trip to Alaska, we drove from mm -hmm. here in Kansas City to um, Seattle and left from there. And we stopped along the way and and saw Mount Rushmore. Oh, fun. That was fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I think anytime that I get to go on vacation and and just relax and enjoy myself, that's the best one yet. See, um, I also really like cruises. I've been on two now and I, I just think they're a lot of fun. I like spending time on the ship. I like doing excursions. I like all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have a husband who really, really likes to plan trips. Uh, so he has decided, he has kind of come up with um, what he thinks age appropriate um, trips will be for James until he's 21. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. He's just like, we'll take James his first time to Disney World when he's this old, and then we'll go to Universal Studios when he's this old. <laughs> Did you hear and Katie? I guess we'll have to take a nanny, maybe. <laughs> and if the nanny's family wants to tag along, maybe that happens too. <laughs> <laughs> the nanny was supposed to get to go to Harry Potter World for her 30th birthday, but we had some big life events that year and it just didn't happen. Right, right. And then pandemic. <laughs> yeah. um, but I, um, I really like road trips also. I think um, I, I'd, I'd love to go to Europe and like just travel through Europe and do all that kind of thing. But I'd really like to, I haven't been to like Mount Rushmore. I've never been to Washington DC. You know, I haven't been, to, I've never been to the Grand Canyon. I haven't been to a lot of like the United States' national landmark sort of things. So I'd really like to make that trip, like maybe just road trip across the country and see all those different things. Well, let me uh, tell you about the Landis ladies plan. Oh, okay. This is my plan. And Katie laughs at me, you know, cause it's really crazy. Mm -hmm. I told Katie that we need to buy an RV. And then when I am out of school next summer, mm -hmm. we just need to take off and travel all across the United States. And we would take Love You More and the Black Needle Society to all sorts of places where it would not normally go. Oh, fun. So see, you could just fly out and meet us at whatever part we're at. And then just do the drive back. <laughs> drive along for a little while, you know. Maybe the Guthrie's will just caravan behind you. <laughs> <laughs> But I, you know, I told Katie that would be my big plan is that we just would do that and just have a good time. Now, of course, I have to have a sewing machine set up in there so that I can still make the book sleeves. Right. But I, I'll put a little work in while Katie drives. <laughs> well, see, I think Timothy's long term plan might be when we retire to buy an RV. Uh huh. His grandparents visited every state in the country. Wow. And I think he would like to do that. But also, Timothy has a goal, which is a goal that I am totally on board with, 
of going to all of the major league ballparks. Fun. Which about, I mean, it's, it's not every state, but you hit a lot of them. Um, so you can drive think, through the others on your way. Right, right, exactly. And we aren't even close to having gone to all of them yet. So that would be fun. Okay, and Michelle's last question that she had is what is the best vacation you've ever been on? Oh, okay. I know we just told you that we really love our cruises. Mm -hmm. However, there was a year, um, I think Katie was already in college. I'm trying to think exactly what year we went. But we planned this trip to go down to Texas. And we visited first with Jeff's brother and his family. Um, they live in the Plano, Texas area. And it was lovely. And Katie and I ended up spending, um, there's a cross-stitch shop fairly close. That's really nice. We ended up spending a day in there and they have huge tables that you can go dining room tables that you can just take all your stuff, go in and sit down and stitch. So Katie and I did that for a day. And then after we'd been with them for a couple of days and we went in July. So we had like all of our birthdays on this trip. Mm -hmm. um, after we did that, we drove way down South. Uh, my brother, my brother then lives way, way, way down almost to the Gulf. And we went down there and took a little meandering trip to get there, really enjoyed ourselves. And then he was still working. So during the day we would go do different things. And we went to the beach one day and just spent the entire day just having a great time. And I was really scrapbooking at that point. Uh -huh. Katie and I drew pictures in the sand. We all put our footprints in the sand lined up and I took pictures of things and that was my um that was my journaling in the book on that mm -hmm. day and um Katie at one point said you know what I don't think I've been this relaxed in probably 10 years mm -hmm. and I think that's probably what made it the best the best vacation right. and then we went back to jeff's brother's house after we'd spent some time with my brother and we celebrated birthdays so we went um they they have three kids and they're all fairly close in age so you know they didn't just frivolously spend on anything mm -hmm. um we went to the store and bought steaks to do on the grill and we bought all the stuff because we wanted to have big fun dinner and we had vacation money set aside and we um went to cheesecake factory and bought cheesecake for dessert so it was just a fabulous relaxing trip and i think the relaxing was the important part right uh this is a hard one for me because I've had like some really, really good vacations. It's I'm not even sure what, what to say because my husband is a huge planner. So anytime we go on vacation together and we've been on a, quite a few vacations together since getting together. And I mean, they're all just fantastic. Um, so I'm having a hard time choosing. Well, we went to uh, we went to Disney World. We did a road trip to Disney World for our honeymoon, and we stopped in Nashville on the way there and on the way back. Um, the first time was just to stay overnight, but we actually we went to the Johnny Cash Museum on the way back, and we also stopped in Metropolis, Illinois, to see the Superman statue. Cool. But we spent like ten days at Disney World, and so we got to do everything you'd want to do at, at all of the Disney World parks mm -hmm. and um, and stayed on property and we got the deluxe dining plan so we got to eat all the good food and so we're like we're just gonna go all out it's our it's our uh, honeymoon 
And we even, um, they don't play there anymore, but at the time, my favorite baseball team, the Braves, did their spring training at Disney. Oh, and so cool. we got, yeah, so we got to go see a spring training game because uh, Timothy and I got married in February. And so they were doing spring training toward the end of our, um, the end of our honeymoon. So we were able to catch a baseball game, which is very us. Um, so that was cool. So that was a really good vacation, but I think I'm just going to tell you about a bunch of vacations. I can't pick one. I know I, I've got a bunch that, that I could go through too. It just, yeah. So the, my very first cruise I went on, um, we went to, uh, Mexico and Belize. Well, we went, we went all out on this vacation because it sailed out of Tampa. So a couple days before we went to Orlando and we went to Universal Studios. And I think we spent three, three days. We did everything you could want to do at Universal Studios. Um, and uh, so that was really fun because I had never been, but Timothy went a couple of times. Like he went when he was younger and then he went whenever he was in college. So he was just really excited showing me all the different things. And then um, we got to go, you know, to all the Harry Potter things, which was pretty cool. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. The universe, I like going to theme parks. I get scared on roller coasters, but I like going on roller coasters. <laughs> um, and then we went on the cruise and it was more like a beach vacation sort of thing on that cruise, um, which is okay. Like I, I like the beach okay. But what was really meaningful about this particular one is we, whenever we went to Belize, we went through part of the, um, it's not a rainforest, but it's like kind of rainforest adjacent, I guess. I can't remember what they call it. But um, we went on like kind of an excursion there and got to see like monkeys and see the trees that allspice comes from and all that kind of thing. But then we got to see Mayan ruins. And um, when I was younger, I was really, really into researching the Mayans. I don't know what it was. I, I really liked, um, you know, like I'd watch Discovery Channel specials as like a preteen <laughs> about like um, Mayan culture and Incan culture. I just, I was fascinated, but I was most fascinated by the Mayan culture. And so that I- was, That was Katie with Egyptology. Uh, yeah, I really liked Egypt too. Um, but I was just, I was fascinated. And so we got to see like a Mayan temple and some carvings and like a ball court and a bunch of other things. And it was just so cool to see in person the things that I had read about and studied. It was just, it was really cool. It was definitely one of those, like that was a bucket list thing for me was seeing uh -huh. my ruins. And so um, it was really, really cool. It was really cool. That was definitely, I mean, we did a lot of cool things that trip, but that was a highlight. And then on our way back, we spent an extra day in Tampa and saw a Rays game because Timothy yeah. has this goal of going to all of the ballparks. And that was interesting. <laughs> it was funny because he just kept Oh, and I also saw whenever we were in Orlando, we saw a Beyonce and Jay-Z concert because I like Beyonce. It was a packed vacation. And Timothy just kept like adding on to it. <laughs> and he's like, well, you know, this could be our last vacation together before we have kids, Keisha. We just really need to do everything we'd want to do. So I was like, okay, okay, that sounds fine. That sounds fine. It wasn't, it wasn't our last vacation before we had kids. We also went on a cruise to Alaska, which I would 100% do again. Yep. And would be really excited to take James and like have an adventure. Cause we saw humpback whales. We went on trains. We did all kinds of things in Alaska. So. Okay. I have to flip back and forth here because I was thinking one of my bucket list items, well, <laughs> Four of my bucket list items are to travel to all of the um, 
the tennis open champion, the oh, Grand yeah. Slams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would like to be in January in Australia, which is fairly close to our, our friend Felicity, Felicity Fish Cross Stitcher. And um, so there would be that added bonus. And, and our friend Chloe too, right? Because they live near oh, each yeah, other. Oh yeah, Chloe is close now too. That's true. And um, then in May, it's Paris for the French Open. In July, it's Wimbledon mm -hmm. for, yeah, it's, I'm sorry, it's in England for Wimbledon. And then in September, it's in New York for the U.S. Open. So that would be, those would be dream vacations. That would be cool. Um, but yeah, we've been so many fun, cool places. The, um, one of the best cruises that we took was a fall cruise and it was to celebrate my birthday and the year we were going to do it, we were actually going to go over July, um, over my birthday. And then I blew my back out and there was just no way I could travel. Mm -hmm. So we pushed it back and we went in October and ended up going up into, we went up the East Coast and into Canada. Mm -hmm. And I love that. And I don't know if I've told the story here before or not, but we flew to New York and the kids were four and 14. And we had to get up and be at the airport at some horrible, horrible time. Like it was dark, dark outside when we got up and Jeff and I were running around trying to get everything done to make sure we were ready to go and, you know, just, just to be there and be ready. Right. And we woke the kids up kind of at the last minute and we got up to the airport. We drove ourselves up and then um, my in-laws went up and picked up our car so that it wouldn't be there the whole time. But we um, got to the airport we're wrangling the kids, you know, you're taking your shoes off and, and wrangling a four-year-old and Katie was just tired and it takes her a while to wake up sometimes. And it doesn't matter how excited you are that you're getting ready to get on a boat. You're still up at the most horrific hour of the day. And then we took off in the airplane and it was, um, it was a pretty crowded flight. And it was like September, I think it was September maybe and not October, but it was still hot, really, really muggy, nasty hot. And um, so we, um, we had packed thinking that, oh, it was gonna be a little chilly because it was early in the morning and it's fall. Ugh. No, it was, it was muggy, nasty. We got to New York, Jeff calls for our car. He had made arrangements for it. Our car shows up and it's a compact. Oh no. It was supposed to be a big car because mm -hmm. there are four of us and um, all of our luggage for a whole week. Right. So, you know, the guy shoves everything in the car gets us all in. I ended up writing, I think I wrote up front and we're trying to go. And the guy just drives us through the least scenic part of New York possible. Oh. And um, we got to the port and got out and thankfully we could get on a little early, but you know, we're talking to them and they had changed our room. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. And we got up to our room. Yes, they had moved us up to a junior suite uh -huh. instead of a, um, just an ocean, a balcony room. So that was a nice thing. Still right. really nasty, muggy. The kids are like exhausted. And then we had to go do the lifeboat drill. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you still had to put on your vest and go to your muster station 
and stand there and listen to the talk. You don't quite do that whole thing now. You go to just different areas and they talk about where you would go. But um, we had not thought about it and we all had on our vests and you know, your vest sticks way out. And our poor little one was on the ground getting buffeted around by all these people who can't see the poor child. Right. So finally, we each grabbed a limb and just pulled and lifted this poor kid up. And um, she's just <clears throat> crying and fussing. But we finally got her up and out of there. And, you know, she gets settled down. And we stayed for the whole lifeboat thing. Craziness, you know. And then we went back to the room and I looked at Jeff and I said, you know, we're going to take off pretty soon. I know we said we would go up on deck, but now we have this lovely balcony and um, we could just, there are chairs out there. We could just go sit out there. It would be okay. And we're going to dinner in just like an hour, hour and a half. I don't really want to mess with taking the kids up on deck and then having to come back down and get ready. So we just kind of collapsed. Katie went outside, picked up Bree, put her on her lap and sat there on the balcony. And finally the ship starts to move and I walked outside and stood with them and um, we took off and it had been overcast and nasty all day. Mm -hmm. And we took off and we started to make our turn and right as we turned, a shaft of sunlight broke through and it shone down right on the Statue of Liberty. Mm. And we had no idea that it was there. Oh, wow. And, you know, I'm yelling for Jeff to come and it was still camera time. He spent a roll and a half of film on the Statue of Liberty because mm. it was just so awe-inspiring to be there. And both of the kids were just amazed by it and it was wonderful i mean katie was old enough to know what was going on but even brie just really got that that was a special thing that we were on the correct side of the ship yeah. and um it was as if every miserable thing that led up to that point of the day was just gone mm -hmm. and our whole trip was wonderful and yeah and my husband has still not seen a dolphin because they don't exist when you're on a cruise but <laughs> um we found out also after we got there that carnival had made a switch and that they were um letting you drop off your kids for dinner mm -hmm. so that they could eat what they wanted to eat with the um the child care services and the cool thing about that was that they had, you took them to one of the um, buffet restaurant areas mm -hmm. and they had an, <clears throat> an area cordoned off. And so we would take Brie there and drop her off with the counselors, sign her in, check her in and everything. And then one of the chefs would come out and would prepare their meals fresh for them every day. Oh, that's nice. And they could have whatever they wanted. Wow. I know that was a big, long story, but. Oh, that's okay. That's a good story. It was a great vacation, so. Oh, whenever we, um, oh, one amazing moment, the Alaska trip, like I said, I would, I would do the Alaska trip again in a heartbeat. That was, if, if it weren't for checking off one of my bucket list items, which was Mayan ruins, the Alaska trip would have had that one beat. Um, we also saw the Seattle Mariners play. So, uh, oh. you know, always sticking with the go see the base, the local baseball team whenever you go on a vacation. But um, we, uh, we went on a whale watching excursion and we got to see um, a mom that was teaching its baby, a mom hump, humpback whale that was teaching its baby how to like come up to the surface and like and dive down so we got to just see this wonderful thing and the 
the captain of that tour was like, this never happens. <laughs> this, a lot of people go and they just, they maybe see a few spouts of water come up, but never like get to see whales come up that far and everything. So that was really amazing to be able to um, witness that. And then we were fortunate enough, um, part of our trip went through Glacier Bay in uh in alaska so we sailed through and um this wonderful national park where you got to see all of these different glaciers and it was beautiful and so we went up we went up top um of course it's crowded uh, on the top deck of the cruise ship because everyone wants to see these you know beautiful views and everything and so we we'd looked for a while and we're like, okay, well, we're gonna go down to our room because we had a balcony room. We got a, a balcony room specifically for this part of the trip. And we were on the right side of the ship. We got to see like these huge glaciers and just like our own just private viewing of this without trying to look around people because I'm short. So it's hard for me to see if there's a crowd of people in front of me. Um, so that was, it was so good just to be able to see it, see all that. I look, we finished that trip being like, what if we moved to Alaska? <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we really enjoyed ourselves on that one. Our Alaska trip was right after I had um, gone gluten-free. And that's, that's a health-related thing. I'm not celiac, but it's something that I need to do. Right. And um, so that was the perfect place for me to be. Our, I had splurged. Um, we had originally planned it for our 30th anniversary. And we ended up waiting an extra year, but um, I had splurged and put us in a suite, a family suite. So each of the kids had a real bed and that was fabulous. Um, and because they were much older by that point, mm -hmm. um, but we got to go into the dining room every night, uh, we had a special dining, we had club class dining. And so each of the servers was responsible for a much smaller number of guests up there. Um, you got way more attention. And then we had our own, oh, I can never think what he's called. the the one who was in charge of all of the other waiters the head waiter the whatever they called him but he would come meet me every day and talk over what i was going to have for my meal mm -hmm. and he was so fun and he just he really talked to me about this is what you need to do this is what you need to ask for this is how you need to order and i thought that was wonderful it just made such a difference in how I looked at being gluten-free and what I knew that I could expect in pretty much any restaurant that I went in. Mm -hmm. There was one night when he was fixing fresh pasta for everyone. And he had come over and asked me, oh, how do you like your appetizer? And I said, oh, it's really good, but oh my gosh, your pasta smells so good if only I weren't gluten-free. And he said, um, you can have that. And he turns around and snaps at one of the, one of the servers and says, go to the kitchen, get me a clean, um, skillet and a clean, clean serving tools, utensils, and get me some gluten-free pasta. And, you know, I didn't even know that I could ask to do that, but right. Yes, he um, got it all back and the servers were hysterical, but I'll finish up here. So 
he got it all back and made me fresh pasta. It was probably the best pasta I've ever had. And there was nothing really to it, but it was just the, oh, I got to have this and it's gluten-free. The servers uh, in the area were hysterical. They fought over who got to serve which tables every night. Mm -hmm. And then they, like for us, they would rush to be the first um, server to bring me gluten-free bread. Oh. <laughs> and the first night that we were there, Katie pops up with a question. Want to say it? You want to say it? She said, how many oceans are there? And can you name them? Mm -hmm. Which sounds like, oh, well, of course you can just whip those out and name those. Right. You kind of get stuck. And Keisha's sitting here thinking about it now, I can tell. Oh, no, I, I know them. <laughs> and so we're talking to our servers and ask them, and they're like, huh. And, you know, you go through like the normal ones, but they've changed the name of one ocean. Oh, they have? Uh -huh. What would you say the oceans are? Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, and Arctic. Plus the Southern Ocean, which is the Antarctic. There's a, they've classified that as an ocean now? Southern, right? Isn't that how we came up, Kate? Southern four. We went, um, we ended up going to like the big map on the ship and looking. So now we're going to be Googling, aren't we? Yeah, like I thought there were four. But if you type in the Southern Ocean, you'll come up with, maybe that's instead of, we're really going to be playing here, huh? I'm, I'm looking it up right now. So I'm like, I feel like I know that. Okay. This is from oceanservice.noaa.gov, the National Ocean Service. Uh -huh. Historically, there, okay, there is only one global ocean. Yes. Historically, there are four named ocean basins, the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, and Arctic. However, most countries, including the United States, now recognize the Southern Antarctic as the fifth ocean basin. Well, and I think that what had happened is that Katie had heard something about a fifth ocean mm -hmm. and we were all like, huh. Well, and now I need to remember that because James is going to learn new information in school and I don't want to look like I don't know the oceans. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that's why the servers loved us because we included them on our craziness. And like the next night there was some other question that we talked about at dinner. It was a way for us to have some discussion, family discussion about something not related to video games or anything that any of us really did. Right. But we had to go look at the big mural on the ship and look at all the oceans and they had it listed on there. Huh. Well, I guess you learn something new every day. I was pretty, pretty solid in my knowledge until just now. <laughs> I mean, that's just like, yeah. It took us a long time and we sat through the meal and they, seriously, the servers were just really enjoying themselves. Mm -hmm. They were great. That's fun. I've always had really good service on cruise ships and I've only been on two, but and we've never had special dining. We've just, you know, been in the general dining and uh, we kind of lucked out. I don't know if it was just because there are only two of us. They'd always sit us at a table with other people. And my husband and I, my husband even more so than me, um, we're both pretty introverted people. So we kind of just wanted to talk to each other. <laughs> so we'd have like the first night uh our table mates might show up and then they just didn't come back which made us be like okay what's wrong with us we're yeah. fun <laughs> but it's probably just because they were sitting us with younger couples and probably 
you know, they were out doing excursions or just eating at the, you know, buffet. Right. Part. But Timothy was very insistent, and I'm glad he was, on, uh, no, every night we're going to the dining room and eating what they have there. Because that was part of our, our fun uh, for the day is looking at what the, um, the menu was. Right. Deciding what we were going to get. So, um, Timothy and I both really like food. We like uh, trying new things and trying, you know, having things that we might not necessarily get um, otherwise. So, Carnival started a thing, and I don't know if they still do this or not, but they had a, a thing that they called Did You? And it was Did You Ever Try This? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every night on the menu, they'd have, I don't know if it's called digit anymore, but it was like a thing you might not have tried. Right. And I thought that was such a fun idea. Mm -hmm. um, I think that my family is beyond carnival. Carnival was lovely, treated us well. I have no complaints about them. It's just definitely um, when we've been, it's been more of a party feel and um, a lot of the things going on are not what we want in a vacation. Right. And there's nothing wrong with what they're doing or anything else. In fact, yeah, I've been on some very interesting cruises and gotten stuck and I've been very well taken care of because of them. Yeah. But no, both. Yeah. We've done princess cruises too. And that's just a little more sedate see we um both times i've went it's been on carnival but up until recently we have been to adults with no ch children and uh, we've gotten like the unlimited drinks package right you know and well but that being said we also one of the very first rooms we'd find on the cruise ship was the library because we also like to go get a drink and go to the library and sit and either um, in Timothy's case probably read his book in my case listen to an audiobook or a podcast and stitch and just look at the ocean that's how we'd spend like at least a couple hours on each of our sea days so I love being able to just sit and look at or listen to the ocean. Mm -hmm. So we never did like, we haven't done any of the parties on deck. We didn't really spend much time at the pool because it was always kind of taken up, but we'd like to, we'd sit out and, and, and do our quiet time activities <laughs> with a drink. Now we've been in the, the pool or the hot tub both um usually later at night before they close down because you know more families are off doing something else right. um, so one of the things we loved was getting a late night snack because you could go up and get whatever you wanted so and we were on a cruise over new year's oh fun it was fun um, they had encouraged people to go up and get balloons and put in your wishes for the new year. And at midnight, they dropped them down the main atrium of the ship. Oh, fun. So it's kind of cool. Yeah, that sounds cool. It sounds like a good experience. Well, that was our last question. You think we should wrap it up? I guess we've been stitching for about an hour now. Have we really? Yep. Wow. See, we only really needed four questions. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can ramble something good. Yeah. Well, this just shows me that uh, we have varied tastes in pizza, that we've gotten a lot of good gifts, and we've been on a lot of good vacations. I would agree with that. Sorry, I was counting. I still oh. am thinking about that gift one. That's always like, man, right. it's been really, really good. I know I've gotten a lot of really good things. Oh, so I realized that you can kind of see my stitch counter um, as I'm going. So I got this little counter and they can see I've done 90, 95 stitches while we've been 
yakking, but um, I bought these off of Amazon and it was like $8 for eight of them. And it just like has this little belt here and you can slide it on your finger and you just hit this little button to count. Like whenever I finish a row, I just hit it the amount of time, amount of stitches that were in that row. And it has a reset button and everything. Really easy to use. I just got them on Saturday, so I haven't been using it for very long, but I'm not, I'm not actively participating in any of the groups that like to count stitches for challenges. I just like counting my own stitches for my own information. But if you are in one of those groups, this is probably a good, that's where I got the recommendation for this anyway. So pretty inexpensive, get a lot in a pack. I think they're pretty fun. So I thought I would tell you, so you weren't like, what is, Ke what is on Keisha's finger and why does she keep doing this? It's a stitch count. I was trying to figure out how many I, stitches I had done. Um, I will have done 123 in just a minute here. Oh, wow, nice. Things were, I think, if I counted everything that I did today. But I know I was spilling in and then I let it trickle down, which mm -hmm. would be farther along on the bookmark than um, where I think I would normally have been. And I'm kind of color completing. Mm -hmm. So I know which colors I messed with today. So I'll show you where I got to. So again, this is the pattern I'm doing. It's R2D2 by Spot Color. And this is where I got to. So I've almost got the gray done in R2D2. So maybe next time I can go into fun things like blue. Because I think I'm going to complete R2 first and then I'll do BB-8, so. That looks good. Thanks. It's cut, a lot of fun. Let me cut this off. Because, yes, I got my other stitches in. <laughs> you guys, you remember that I am working on perforated paper, which is not a thing I normally do. Um, I had a couple comments about it. And um, I think I said that Keisha would be the one to ask your perforated questions too, because she has much more experience with it than I do, because it's not a thing that I necessarily enjoy because of the style of stitching I do. However, now that I'm stitching in a hoop, most of the time, right. this is very similar to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have like basically the same rigid um, thing that you'd have with stitching in a hoop. Right. And I mean, like in a hoop, I figured out how to get my finger underneath and be able to just push the needle through so I can still do the sewing method part of the time. But, you know, I'm playing um, wall chicken where I am. How close to the, the wall of the hoop can I get? So yeah. I'm doing, you know, a poke and stab type thing too. Um, mine... Uh, you know, I'll let you see the that's the top. Mm -hmm. And I have been working on the alphabet. Oh, and wow. That's coming along so great. Thank you. I got a lot done. I started with the hearts. And then uh, I think the Q is the same color. And I ended up using full crosses on it. And I'm not taking them out. Because oh, all of the rest of my letters other than the JLKB are um, just a half cross. Mm -hmm. and um i did the letter h was not in so everything in the same color as the h is now in down to this far nice. and then the blue things were not in so awesome why i got quite a bit and yeah. doing the color completing and all of that makes it go a little faster and mm -hmm. i feel pretty good yeah. about that probably take me i'm looking at this I would say it will probably take me three more times to finish this one. Mm. You're probably going to be a little longer than that. Yours yeah, a little bit longer. Heavier. I'd say probably I need maybe two more times to finish out R2D2 because I've almost got the gray and then it's just kind of fill in. So I won't have to really look at the pattern as much because I'll just fill in the blue where the gray isn't. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd say maybe like 
two more times to finish R2 and then I have to do the exact same thing for BB-8. So then, so I think a total of eight times to finish that out, but that's okay. I'm in no big hurry to yeah. finish it. These are, I mean, it's kind of interesting to see what kind of time it takes us to get through these. Right. Well, and we know that we are doing this for about an hour each time and just like kind of chatting. So it's, it doesn't have our full attention. So it'll be kind of interesting just to see like how much time we think it takes to do these things. So. Yes. Yes. I do find that when I'm chatting, I get a lot of stitching done. Mm -hmm. So yeah, a good thing. Okay, so next week we will be back to a uh, regular floss tube. Um, I don't know if we're going to have anything extra. Keisha and I will have to chat back and forth this week and see what we're adding. Right, right. Who knows? Again, you guys never know what you're going to get with us. I will, <laughs> we'll do a video. <laughs> but who knows what will be in it? <laughs> and by the way, if you're new to our channel, we kind of have this formula that twice a month we are doing a stitch with us and the other weeks we're doing a regular floss tube. Mm -hmm. um, it just gives us a little more freedom to um, have an off week. Right. And pick it up. Although you have been, you've been killing it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> you've been doing great. So. Well, I've been enjoying this format because I get at least an hour <laughs> of guaranteed stitching time where the husband is watching James and I get to just sit and talk with my friend and stitch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you, I mean, I know with a new baby, it's just hard to make time to do it. Well, and now James just turned six months old. So just so everyone knows. So I, we've, we've kept, kept him alive and healthy for six whole months. <laughs> Pretty proud. <laughs> but, um, but now he's definitely more interactive than he used to be. And he'll play by himself a little bit, but not for too long. Like you can maybe set him down for about 15 minutes and he'll play with his, his favorite thing in the whole world is this book that just crinkles. So you just hear <laughs> all the time. Um, and he'll play with that for a little bit. And if Clifford, the big red dog is on, he will watch Clifford, but that's not, or dancing. He really likes yeah. watching dance but then he's like okay but can we play a game together can you give me some attention so there's not a whole lot I have to wait until he goes to sleep before I can really um, spend some time and um I did two days last week and I was pretty proud I woke up about a half hour before James did and I made myself a cup of coffee and I stitched a little bit um were your ears burning Friday night because in our stitch group Friday night um, I can't think who it was, but somebody commented that they just could not get over the amount of stitching you were still putting out. Oh, well, that's because I'm like, all right, is this boy taking a nap? Stitch, 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 stitch. <laughs> well, and the funny thing is um, you guys haven't even really seen most of what I'm stitching because I'm stitching on two models and that's probably part of it. I'm like, I have to, I have deadline. Well, I've given myself a deadline on one. There is a deadline for it, but I've given myself a deadline. And then the other one, I have told Katie that I will have it done by the end of March. So I have to go <laughs> and stitch on that one. So I just realized I needed to take my needle off and put it with this. So I'll have one next time. Good plan. That might be important. Maybe. <laughs> That's needles are usually pretty helpful. Oh, and I have to show you my needle minder. Okay. I, I don't know if I've shown this before or not. Katie designed a mm -hmm. special needle minder for everyone. Oops, sideways. For everyone who purchased her year one pattern. So good. So and good. It's that Katie. Teeny tiny little chocolate frog needle minder. That Katie. I love it. It's like, it, I mean, I just feel like that's a perfect size and it's off of our glow forge. So it is engraved. Uh, you can feel the frog in there. That's kind of fun, but it holds your needle really nicely. So that's like so my excited. favorite. Needle so mode. excited for year two. Yeah. Just wait till you see what the needle minder is for that. Excited. It'll be hard to top last year's, but I'm sure, I'm sure Katie will. <laughs> I'm excited. 
All right. Well, we should probably go because yep. I think Did James a took a nap, but now I hear him again. So oh, okay. I should probably go and see what's going on with the Guthrie men. <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. All right. Well, we'll talk to you guys later. 